って言ってがあるけど。Okay. okay, so、uh, good morning,、uh, everybody. So,、uh, let me first identify who I am. So,、uh, I am a kind of material physicist, and I have been looking for new compound with、uh, exotic you know, state.、Uh, in particular, you know, those you know, formed by so called correlated electrons. I've been in kind of my, my field for long. So,、uh, I, like、uh, you know, Alan yesterday, you know, I attended to, you know, one of the very first、uh, high TC c o n f e r e n c e in Tureste in 1988. So, that means I'm old <laughs> again. <laughs> And、uh, since then, you know, I have been motivated to look for kind of exotic electric phases you know, from a material you know, perspective. So,、uh, today,、uh, among you know, many exotic you know, phases, you know,、uh, let me speak about、uh, quantum spin liquid. Let's see. So,、uh, let me speak about the、uh, quantum spin liquid. And、uh, during、uh, two weeks, you know, there are many talks on quantum spin liquid. And、uh, I'm going to give you a bit、uh, lower level of、uh, you know, uh, lecture than you know, those you know, given kind of earlier. And、uh, yesterday, and the, the day before yesterday,、uh, Yon Bak you know, gave a nice intuitive picture. You know,、uh, using analogy with you know, BCS superconductor and、uh, quantum spin liquid. And、uh, you know, last week,、uh, Natasha gave a beautiful overview of quantum spin liquid. And y u j i Matsuda you know, gave uh, you know, uh, some sort of state of art、uh, discovery of、uh, uh, you know, you know, thermal hole effect. And that today, you know,、uh, I try to cover a bit, you know, a bigger kind of perspective of uh, uh, quantum spin liquid in general. Not only type quantum spin liquid, but so called、uh, RVB type, you know, quantum spin liquid.、Okay. So、uh, here is kind of an outline. And I have,、uh, you know,、uh, two lectures, in the、uh, one in the morning and,、uh, you know, the other in the afternoon. And in, in the morning,、uh, let me try to、uh, give you kind of a concept, you know, background. Okay?、Uh, I'm gonna, going to give you, you know,、uh, kind of experimentalist way of、uh, you know, what is you know, quantum spin liquid.、Okay. And、uh, first, you know, I'm going to、uh, discuss about、uh, you know, kind of a classical, canonical、uh, quantum spin liquid、uh, based on RVV. And then, you know, let me give you. Uh, experimental way of、uh, understanding you know, what is you know, type of quantum spin liquid.、Uh, in the afternoon,、uh, let me take you to the world of、uh, reality, meaning that、uh, you know, uh, we have a you know, number of you know, compounds uh, where you know,、uh, those you know, quantum spin liquid is highly likely realized. And、uh, le let me you know, Uh, show you some of、uh, you know, convincing e x a m p l e of、uh, quantum spin liquid in real material. Okay,、uh, starting from、uh, organic you know, quantum spin liquid to inorganic you know, quantum spin liquid, and the later you know, quantum、uh, spin liquid. And、uh, let me show you, you know, how to take a look at all the experimental data. Okay. So, Uh, this might be a bit、uh, too naive, but you know,、uh, when you know, we learn you know,、uh, solid state you know, physics,、uh, we learn you know, the outest you know, orbital in solid determines you know, electric you know, properties. 
And each in orbital can accommodate two, uh, two electrons in you know, an up and down spin. And if you have uh, you know, two electrons, you know, uh, the orbital are completely occupied, and the material is uh, kind of bound in the But if we have you know, only one electron per orbital, you know, using a uh, bacon site, you know, uh, they kind of travel around uh, almost freely, and uh, they form some sort of uh, electron gas. And that's a kind of very basics of uh, condensed matter. But in so-called uh, transient metal oxide, which you know, uh, I have been working for you know, more than kind of 30 years, the outest orbital is d orbital. And if you take a look at the wave function of uh, you know, n equals 3 orbital state, as, as you can see, you know, uh, the, you know, radial distribution of wave function becomes you know, narrower and narrower on going from uh, 3s to 3d. And the 3d, you know, the orbital is quite uh, localized. So uh, they are kind of orbiting, you know, uh, very hard, okay? And because of that, you know, uh, 3d orbital tend to be kind of confined in space substantially. And if you put two electrons on the same orbital, you know, we estimate, you know, uh, Coulomb repulsion between two electrons could be two to 10 electron volt. Actually, if you naively calculate uh, Coulomb repulsion between two electrons, you know, with, you know, one almost longer distance, you will get something like 10 electron volt, okay? So uh, this two to 10 electron volt is kind of quite natural number. And uh, this uh, Coulomb U is even larger than, you know, a typical ferry energy, two electron volt. And as a result, uh, motion of you know, electron is uh, you know, kind of uh, blocked by you know, Coulomb repulsion. If you know, electron want to hop you know, next to you know, site, if you know, other electron is sitting already, you know, it will be pushed back. Okay? And uh, as a result, uh, in order to hop around, uh, the electron has to find the vacant site. And because of that, you know, electrons are kind of strongly entangled. That's why we call uh, those you know, electron system correlated electrons. So uh, this uh, you know correlated electron, you know if you know they move around, uh, can be viewed as an you know, electron liquid. And in the limit of uh, you know strong you know Coulomb view, you know uh, finally you know uh, electron you know stop you know moving around and they form some sort of a solid uh, called the uh, motor insulator. And as you see, you know, charge degree of freedom is completely blocked. But of course, you have a spin degree of freedom, up and down. And uh, using this, you know, the system could be a magnet. And, uh, you know, the, through those kind of interaction, uh, inside the solid, okay, you can have, you know, variety of uh, electric phases, you know, formed. Like uh, not only electron gas, but sometimes, you know, correlated liquid. Uh, sometimes uh, electron solid, like uh, electron crystal, uh, superfluid could be viewed as uh, superconductor. And uh, we, we discuss uh, liquid crystal state of in electrons. Okay. And uh, th those are kind of uh, my target, you know, what do you know I call uh, electronic matters in solid. Okay. And of course, you know, uh, you know each electron as you know, charge minus E, and uh, you know, they have you know, choice of spin up and down. And also, D orbital is in general 5 fold degenerate. Okay? So you have a choice of uh, you know, which orbital uh, you should you know, choose. Okay? So that you know, we call multiple degrees of freedom. And often, you know, uh, those, you know, charge spin orbital degree of freedom behave independently from each other. For example, you know, you can have a situation like uh, charge solid, you know, charge doesn't move, but the spin remains in the liquid state called the spin liquid, which I'm going to speak about. Although not yet identified, uh, people discuss, you know, possibility of orbital liquid. Okay, so uh, charge is kind of solid. However, you know, over time kind of fluctuating. That kind of uh, state you know, could exist. 
Now, of course, in, in reality, you know, uh, charge spin orbital, you know, they are not you know, completely independent with the other, and uh, they're kind of coupled, you know, because they belong to the same electron, and they form even more complicated uh, self-organized uh, pattern of charge and spin orbital. Okay, that, that's why, you know, those, you know, uh, phases of, uh, you know, electrons are kind of interesting. And a typical example of electric phase, you know, you might be able to find it in high TC Q plate. So, as many of you know, you know, uh, mother compound of high TC Q plate, it's, you know, uh, D9, you know, whole one motin And that, 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 that situation you can view as uh, electrons. Uh, electron solid. And uh, they are insulator, and uh, they experience, uh, you know, magnetic you know, phase transition into anti-ferromagnet. And that, that situation you can view as, you know, spin liquid in you know, a solid you know, transition. And uh, by doping, you know, solid melt into stranger, you know, liquid state, this might be viewed as uh, electron liquid, you know, crystal called the uh, pseudo gap state. And eventually, you know, they became, uh, you know, uh, electron liquid, where we have electron liquid. But on the way, you have, you know, D-wave superconductivity. And of course, in a dilute limit, you know, they should be viewed as uh, simple electron gas. And in, uh, you know, uh, transition metal oxide, okay, you, you can see those, you know, exotic electric phases, you know, here and there. And uh, here is kind of some of the example of, uh, you know, phase diagram of uh, transition metal oxide. And uh, you, you, you can see many phases are competing with each other, right? So you have solid one, solid two, liquid one, liquid two. Uh, you know, kind of phase competition is one of the hallmarks of uh, oxide physics. Now, uh, by recognizing those, you know, richness of electric phase in transition metal oxide. Uh, let me focus, you know, one kind of specific uh, charming phase, kind of my favorite phase. And uh, my favorite phase is, you know, quantum spin liquid, okay, which is, you know, title of today. So, uh, suppose, you know, we have, you know, charged solid, motor insulator, okay? So now, you know, because of a coolant power, the electron cannot move. Okay? And if, you know, neighboring spins are kind of anti parallel each other, as, as you know, uh, still, you know, uh, this electron can hop to, you know, next, you know, site by costing coolant energy U. But in case of uh, fellow magnetic arrangement, you know, because of parallel exclusion principle, you know, uh, this, you know, spin cannot travel to next site. So only when you have anti-ferromagnetic you know, configuration, uh, you can gain kind of some energy by you know, perturbation, something like this. So uh, if you, know, you have a you know, uh, single orbital motor you know, state, uh, in general, you know, uh, magnetic interaction between two spins are uh, anti-ferromagnetic. Okay. Of course, if you have, you know, more than one orbital uh, relevant, you know, uh, the situation is much more complicated. But through this, you know, so-called exchange you know, process, uh, you, know, uh, you know, most of, you know, motor insulator is anti-ferromagnet. And uh, before, you know, discussing high TC Q plate, uh, you know, our hero, uh, Phil Anderson, you know, uh, wrote, uh, you know, one paper you know, almost uh, 50 years ago now. So he said that a new kind of insulator. So what he meant is, uh, if, you know, uh, you have, you know, uh, anti-ferromagnet, okay, anti-ferromagnet insulator, anti-ferromagnet coupled spins on top of square radius, you know, you, you simply have up-down, up-down configuration. That's kind of quite, you know, stable. So this situation can be viewed as uh, spin solid. But uh, if you put it on kind of triangle, okay, uh, there is no way, you know, uh, to find a, you know, a configuration. All the bonds are kind of happy, meaning an anti parallel. And with combination, with, you know, quantum effect, quantum fluctuation, 
you know, uh, on a kind of triangular list, you know, Anderson uh, stated that, you know, uh, Grand stated some sort of, uh, you know, quantum spin lady. And uh, this is kind of, he named, you know, a new kind of uh, insulator 50 years ago. Okay, so the, I, I don't know you know how to express the image of a quantum spin liquid, but it's kind of something like this. And then, uh, you know, uh, and I, you know, this kind of motivated the experiment a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, many experimentalists, even kind of one or two generations, you know, before me, have been looking for quantum spin liquid state based on triangular magnet. But somehow, you know, those attempts wasn't, you know, quite, you know, successful. And after high TC, somehow, you know, uh, material community, community, you know, come, come to quantum, you know, magnetism community, you know, closely. And uh, I think uh, that was, uh, you know, a uh, big, you know, breakthrough for the community. And uh, now, you know, we have, you know, many kind of candidates for, you know, under some you know, quantum spin liquid. And I said, uh, you know, combination of a geometrical fluctuation and the quantum fluctuation. And uh, let me give you, you know, quite an experimental way of, uh, you know, uh, what is kind of quantum fluctuation and the uh, instability of anti ferromagnet. Okay. So uh, this is kind of an anti ferromagnet. So you have, you know, up and up, down, up, down, you know, configuration and the pointing uh, G direction. That's kind of anti ferromagnet And, uh, you know, start from, uh, you know, Heisenberg, you know, anti ferromagnetic Hamiltonian. Okay, so you have kind of three component, X, Y, G, but this configuration, you know, they can gain only through G component, okay? And uh, because of that, you know, when, you know, uh, Neil discovered anti ferromagnet as far as I understand, uh, there was discussion, you know, whether anti ferromagnet you know, could be stable or not. And uh, why, you know, anti ferromagnet is kind of unstable? You know, let me use, uh, you know, some sort of a hand waving argument. Uh, consider only two spins, okay, ne neighboring two spins, okay, you know, coupled, you know, uh, Heisenberg. And as many of you know, uh, you have, you know, kind of four states, up and down, times two. And the those state, in the presence of uh, Heisenberg interaction, you know, split into singlet, gaining, you know, minus three quarter J, and the triplet, you know, gaining, uh, you know, and uh, that, that's kind of unstable, you know, quarter J, you know, above, you know, zero energy, okay? So the grand state is, you know, many of you know, you know, spin singlet, and that is kind of superposition of up down and the down up. Okay, and the consider, you know, anti fellow like you know, situation, just in you know, up down. And as you see, you know, uh, this you know, anti fellow situation is a superposition of uh, 50 percent triplet and 50 percent singlet. So this you know configuration, you know, the energy is you know minus you know uh, quarter. So uh, by kind of adding, uh, you know, uh, two different, you know, configurations, uh, here actually you gain kind of some energy, okay, you know, coming from here. And uh, so this, you know, sometimes, uh, as far as I understand, the people call it the anti ferromagnet or anti ferromagnet is, is not, you know, robust against the quantum fluctuation, uh, superposition of uh, those two. And the uh, singlet is kind of stable. And I think that, that's kind of a basis of uh, Anderson's argument. Now, once knowing uh, you know, those uh, you know, singlet or quantum fluctuation you know, stabilizes uh, singlet you know, state, uh, maybe you might you know, consider what could be ground state. Okay? And the easiest is you, know, uh, you place a singlet you know, pair you know, regularly on top of the lattice. So you form a lattice of, you know, uh, spin singlet pairs, okay? And again, you know, uh, the energy of spin singlet. And uh, this illustration is called the uh, valence bond solid, okay? Solid means that, you know, uh, this uh, spin singlet, you know, pair, you know, occupies a specific site. 
you know, deformer lattice. That's why we call it uh, valence bond solid. Uh, we often uh, write down like a VVS state, okay? And apparently, you know, this state, okay, uh, you are kind of breaking, uh, you know, symmetry, okay? And I often, you know, uh, this state is not, you know, uh, so stable if you do calculate. But you forget about lattice. And in reality, you know, we often see those, you know, valence bond solid state in real material because, uh, you know, uh, you have coupling to lattice. And uh, once, you know, uh, you have a kind of a shortened bond by lattice distortion, you can stabilize uh, this uh, cigarette state and stabilize the valence bond solid state. So uh, this state is, you know, not, you know, so unstable, okay? But, you know, if you don't like, you know, lattice distortion, maybe, you know, instead of having a solid state of, uh, you know, uh, singlet, you may prefer, you know, a kind of superposition of uh, different, uh, you know, distribution of singlet, okay? So, like, on a triangular lattice, uh, because of uh, geometric frustration, uh, you have, you know, many ways of, you know, uh, placing a spin singlet on top of triangular lattice. Okay, and then let's consider, you know, Kantan superposition of a different distribution of, you know, singlet state. So the state is kind of a, yes. Uh, you, you mean which? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and how about when? Oh, no, no, but balance bond in the solid uh, fully gains uh, this uh, singlet in energy, say for uh, spin singlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but compared with those, uh, you know, if you do calculate uh, numerically, you know, often uh, those states are kind of more kind of stable. But in reality, you know, there's a coupling with lattice, and uh, that, that could change, you know, thing. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, and uh, if you, you know, consider like a singlet, you know, uh, pair, you know, on a neighboring, you know, lattice, you know, uh, we, we call it, uh, you know, uh, short range, you know, resonating, uh, resonating balance bond state. So this is kind of a, you know, uh, most naive image of uh, what is, you know, quantum spin liquid, okay? So you have, you know, uh, kind of a short range, you know, uh, singlet, you know, pair. And you have, uh, you know, many ways to distribute the spin singlet onto triangular lattice. And uh, why don't we consider all kind of state and uh, counter mechanically, you know, sum up, okay? So uh, those states are kind of counter mechanically, uh, kind of, uh, you know, fluctuating. But because of uh, superposition, okay, uh, what's important is they do not, you know, break uh, symmetry. So symmetry is not in a block, okay? And uh, at, at the moment, you know, we, we, we consider only next nearest, I uh, know, nearest neighbor singlet pair. And that, that we call the short range RVB. But of course, uh, you might even you know, consider, you know, uh, long range, you know, uh, you know uh, singlet you know, pairs, okay? Uh, then actually, uh, you, you have, you know, even more kind of a different, you know, possible, you know, choices. And uh, you can consider, you know, superposition of, uh, you know, long range, you know, pairs. That is called the long range RVB. Okay? And uh, this state, okay, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, those, uh, you know, uh, singlet are only nearest neighbor singlet. So in order to excite you know, those kind of singlet, uh, you have to create a triplet. So uh, this you know, state, uh, it's kind of highly likely, you know, you have a kind of gap in the excitation. However, those uh, long range RVB, it's kind of superposition of a strong pair and a moderately, you know, strong you know, pair. 
a very weak pair, and eventually, you know, zero. So there is a kind of a distribution of excited state, okay? So uh, you can have, you know, uh, zero energy excitation, and then you have, you know, kind of a continuum excitation uh, because the presence of, uh, you know, strong pair and uh, weak, you know, pair. And uh, this, you know, uh, we expect, you know, uh, excitation is kind of a gapless, okay? But again, you know, uh, by superposing all those different states, uh, global symmetry not to you know, block, okay? But as, as you see, you know, from this, so uh, those two are called uh, quantum spin liquid, okay, because of a quantum superposition of a cigarette state. But, you know, as, as you see, you know, you know, you can have, you know, many different, you know, kind of, uh, you know, quantum spin liquid. So uh, quantum spin liquid is not uni uniquely defined. Okay, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, th this is kind of uh, one of the most important uh, view graph uh, in this morning. Okay. And uh, one of the hallmarks of uh, those, uh, you know, quantum spin liquid state is called uh, fractionalization. So, uh, in order to break up, uh, you know, spin signal pair, you have to create a spin triplet, okay? S equal one, you kind of excitation. But in a quantum spin liquid, you know, uh, those, you know, S equal one kind of excitation, you know, uh, they can kind of split into two free S is equal one half like excitation. And uh, so uh, this situation, uh, we have, you know, elementary excitation like spin one half. This is called uh, spin on. And uh, this is kind of ferionic. And, uh, you know, uh, people believe, you know, they can form uh, some sort of a Fermi surface of, you know, spin on. Okay. And since uh, spin one excitation split into two spin one half, you know, people call it uh, fractionalization. So in a conventional magnet, as uh, actually some people discussed you know, last week, uh, you know, you have, you know, uh, well-defined, uh, you know, magnon dispersion. Line of uh, excitation. But, you know, quantum spin liquid, uh, because of uh, those uh, mobile, you know, spin one half, you know, uh, excitation called uh, spin on. Okay, and uh, even they can form a kind of Fermi surface. So the excitation is like a uh, metal. And uh, you, you can have, you know, kind of a continuum excitation. So people take, you know, the presence of uh, uh, continuum excitation as kind of evidence for uh, fractionalization. So uh, this, this, this is actually, you know, you, you, you can find the pine in her textbook. Yes? The spin on are Yeah. So the, 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 this is just, uh, you know, like a uh, metal. Okay. Yes? Uh, uh, could you speak up, please? You know, sorry, actually, there is uh, air conditioning uh, above me. So. Yes. Yeah. So I, 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 I think uh, you know, uh, even uh, you know, short range RBB case, uh, there, there, there could be kind of a spin on. I think uh, that could be a kind of quite uh, important uh, distinction between uh, you know, kind of spinning and so on. Yeah. For example, like uh, Kagome radius, uh, you know, uh, they could have gap, but still, you know, uh, they discuss uh, language of uh, continuum and uh, fractionalization. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think so, but there, there could be succession, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it should be, yes. Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, maybe, you know, is there any neutron scatter in 
the audience? Yeah. But okay. In, in general, in you know, higher the process, uh, you know, intensity is much kind of weaker, right? Of course, uh, you know, uh, this uh, concept of fractionization, you know, came from uh, 1D system. So 1D Heisenberg, uh, we have kind of exact, you know, kind of, a, you know, solution, you know, based on the bad answers and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, by neutron diffraction, uh, you can see a beautiful kind of continuum, you know, like this. And uh, this actually, you know, people believe, uh, you know, kind of experimental evidence for fractionization of uh, spin excitation in case of 1D. And uh, th this can be compared with, uh, you know, kind of theory in a sophisticated way, okay? So uh, there is a kind of analogy between 1D or 2D, or, you know, many of the concepts of 2D, you know, came from uh, kind of 1D. But the, the difference is uh, falling. So in case of 1D, we know uh, what is exactly ground state, as far as I understand. But in case of a 2D, you know, uh, this RVB-like state, including short range, you know, long range, uh, you know, nobody obtained the, you know, those RVB-like, you know, state as a exact solution of any Hamiltonian. You know, uh, so the, the only way to do kind of numerical, you know, uh, calculation. But uh, numerical calculation, you know, there's a kind of side effect, and, uh, you know, there's a kind of a sign problem, and, uh, you know, there's a kind of a, you know, confusion among uh, theory colleagues. And I don't have a deep understanding of, uh, you know, what is the kind of point. But, like, uh, you know, let me, you know, uh, quote the example of, uh, you know, spin one half, you know, Kagome anti-ferro magnet, okay? You, you know what the Kagome lab is, right? And the Kagome lattice, you know, anti ferromagnet, you know, you have a well-defined Hamiltonian, but nobody can solve it. And uh, people that, uh, you know, uh, kind of numerical calculation. But there was kind of a, you know, big, you know, uh, confusion among uh, theorists. Okay, what could be the grand state of uh, Kagome anti ferromagnet until very recently? And uh, like, uh, yeah, somebody said, you know, oh, okay, so uh, Kagome anti ferro magnet, you know, there, there, there should be a kind of small gap in spin excitation, like a short range in RVB, and, uh, you know, that, that should be described as a kind of a G2 gap spin liquid. But some people say, oh, this is gapless uh, U1 spin liquid. Uh, and uh, there are still kind of many paper on archive. Okay. And uh, I don't know uh, who should kind of trust, you know. So, yeah, I, I'm sorry, but so let, let me say, uh, some people said, oh, this is kind of final answer, but then, you know, another paper shows up. No, no, it's not in final answer yet. And uh, there should be, you know, gap, you know, there should be gapless, something like that. And uh, let, let, let me talk about this subject you know, afterwards, you know, by showing uh, some of our experimental realization of Kagome Lattice, okay? Uh, so in, in that sense, uh, you know, RVB spin liquid, uh, I think everybody believes uh, existence, but uh, somehow uh, reality is kind of uh, not you know, fully understood yet, you know, compared with, you know, 1D. That's kind of message. And somehow, you know, uh, maybe you, 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 you can say, you know, uh, two statements. One is, uh, you know, okay, uh, those RVB quantum spin liquid, uh, you, know, uh, you know, kind of theoretical support is not really good enough, okay? Or, you know, you may say, uh, because, you know, uh, theory cannot, you know, predict what it is, that's why it is interesting uh, to the experiment. You know, there, there could be kind of two ways 
of you know, understanding uh, current you know, situation. But anyway, uh, recognizing uh, you know, that kind of uh, chaos, uh, you know, uh, there was a kind of big, you know, uh, kind of recent uh, breakthrough by Alex, you know, Kitaev. You know, that's, you know, what you know, I want to tell you kind of next. Okay. So somehow, you know, Kitaev is not, you know, in the condensed matter community, but he suddenly jumped into this, uh, you know, uh, issue, you know, from the perspective of, uh, you know, quantum computation and so on. And uh, some time ago, I think, uh, you, know, uh, you know, more than kind of 10 years ago, uh, he proposed, uh, you know, his uh, Hamiltonian called the uh, Kitaev Hamiltonian. Uh, there are many Hamiltonian with the name of Kitaev, but this is, you know, one of the most, you know, famous one. Uh, Kitaev uh, model on Hankam Lalis. Okay? And uh, somehow uh, he kind of find uh, this, you know, Hamiltonian you know, you, he can get the uh, exact, you know, solution. And now, you know, uh, from uh, his work, we know actually what is, you know, quantum spin liquid exactly, okay? And uh, that, that's why, you know, everybody is kind of motivated, you know, to uh, work on, the, you know, Kitaev uh, quantum spin liquid uh, nowadays, okay? So uh, what, you know, Kitaev did was uh, he placed uh, spin one half, you know, moment on hand camera, okay? So in the sense that, you know, the model is quite simple. You know, we known Hanika Morales and uh, spin one half. And now uh, Hanika Morales, you have, you know, three bonds, right? Uh, So-called 120 degree bonds, right, on the Hanika Morales. And as you see, you know, uh, those kind of three bonds are colored, like uh, green, blue, red, okay? So actually, you, 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 you can color all the kind of bonds in three color on the hand camera. And uh, he placed, you know, uh, some sort of uh, strong, you know, ising ferromagnetic interaction on top of uh, those kind of three bonds. Okay? And uh, this uh, easy, easy axis on the bond, okay, uh, you have a choice. And in his model, okay, Okay, uh, this, uh, you know, red in a bond, okay, uh, aging axis G direction. And the blue bond, uh, aging axis Y direction. Okay, and the green bond, uh, aging axis is X direction. Okay, so uh, you have, you know, three orthogonal uh, aging, aging axis for three bond. Okay, and they are orthogonal to each other. I think that's the point. So uh, naive image is like, uh, suppose that you, you have, you know, spins in on top of number six, right? And if you consider bond is in number one, you know, uh, they want to polarize spin along G direction, right? But green, you know, they want to polarize, you know, spin along X direction. And the blue try to polarize, you know, spin on six to Y direction, X, Y, Z, orthogonal, okay? So uh, three, you know, orthogonal uh, peripheral direction. So therefore, uh, those, you know, three bonds uh, conflict with each other on number six, right? Each side, you know, you have, you know, conflict of three bonds, okay? That gives a strong, you know, frustration, like uh, triangular is, okay? That, that's the source. And uh, naively, you know, like uh, you can make a, uh, like, happy bond, right? You know, uh, like, uh, you know, green would like to pull a spin along X, right? So you have, you know, uh, spin X ferromagnetic pair on this, you know, green bond. And the blue, you know, you, you can have, uh, you know, spin Y, you know, fellow bond, okay? And they're kind of happy, okay? And uh, those two, you know, they don't talk to each other, right? So they, 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 they can fill up in all kind of uh, spins with kind of happy bond, like this way, okay? And of course, you know, like, you know, uh, triangular lattice, uh, there are many ways of uh, filling uh, Hanukkah lattice with only happy bond, okay? And then you may consider, you know, uh, superposition of uh, different, you know, arrangement of a happy bond, okay? So each spin must choose, you know, one happy bond, okay? 
but uh, you, you can distribute the happy bond different way. And then you can have, you know, uh, superposition of, uh, you know, those you know, happy pairs. So this is somewhat, you know, uh, similar to our movie state. And in that sense, uh, you know, I, I, I believe uh, this Kitahe uh, model is kind of in deep uh, connected to, you know, our wave state. Okay? But of course, uh, this is a kind of experimental way of understanding that. But, you know, uh, theorists are much you know, smarter than me. And, uh, you know, Kitahe actually exactly solved uh, his Hamiltonian. And uh, let me trace uh, what he did, okay, you know, on my understanding, okay? Uh, if, you know, I say something uh, wrong, uh, maybe, you know, Yonbak, you know, might, you know, correct me. So this is kind of Hamiltonian. And the uh, first point is uh, you can define a quantity called a G2 flux, okay? So uh, you kind of uh, multiply, you know, those kind of, uh, you know, spin operator along hexagon, okay? One, two, six. So uh, this is called the G2 flux unit quantity. And somehow, you know, Kitaev showed that this uh, G2 flux uh, commute with, you know, Hamiltonian, okay? So therefore, uh, you know, W, you know, G2 flux is a conserved property, okay? And, uh, you know, this is kind of local, you know, quantity, okay? So therefore, you can define, okay, and, uh, you know, eigenvalue of W is kind of plus minus one. So you have, you know, plus minus one flux for each kind of bracket because, you know, W is conserved in the local quantity. And uh, that's kind of, uh, as far as I understand, the, you know, one of the first important point. And then, actually, he introduced, uh, you know, so-called Magrana, you know, uh, operator. You know, it's quite a mathematic, like a four Magrana operator, you know, X, Y, G direction, and, uh, you know, Mata, you know, Magrana C. And uh, you replace that, you know, uh, spin operator, with, you know, two Magellan operator, P, and C. So as uh, Yonbak discussed uh, yesterday, so uh, this uh, Hamiltonian, you know, you have, you know, four Magellan operator, product of four Magellan operator. But there is, uh, you know, pattern coming from uh, C and also from B, like, you know, A. But, you know, you, you can easily find, even I, I, I can calculate that, uh, this uh, B uh, commutes, you know, H and also W. And so uh, it, it kind of measures, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, G2 flux and uh, take, you know, uh, plus minus, you know, one. So uh, if, you know, so that means, uh, you know, uh, consider, you know, this uh, A, you know, uh, th th this term kind of plus minus one, okay? So you have, you know, uh, something like a J, C, I, dagger, C, J. That's, you know, nothing but, uh, you know, Hamiltonian of electron on top of uh, Han Kamurari. So uh, then uh, C should have, uh, you know, uh, kind of a Dirac-like, you know, dispersion, okay? That's why, you know, uh, you, you have, you know, uh, you know Dirac-like, you know, dispersion of, uh, you know, matter magrana fermions. And uh, this uh, P term defines uh, this, you know, hopping, you know, parameter. So uh, if, you know, uh, this, uh, you know, flux is not in order, you have kind of a random phase, you know, plus minus, you know, uh, from, you know, bracket to bracket. But at low temperature, you know, flux, you know, does order. And uh, then actually you have kind of uniform, you know, phase, and then you have Dirac dispersion. That's kind of random state. That's, you know, uh, what, you know, uh, how, you know, Kitaev solved uh, this uh, uh, Hamiltonian, as far as, you know, I understand. Okay, but now, you know, this uh, W is uh, kind of a local, you know, quantity, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, kind of conserved. So, uh, like, uh, excitation related to W uh, should have a gap, okay? And, uh, you know, real spin, real spin is kind of a combination of B and C, but it, it must, you know, contain, you know, a B kind of operator. So therefore, in a, you know, excitation of a real spin, you know, uh, you, you have to kind of excite, uh, you know, this uh, G2 flux. So therefore, uh, you might expect a gap in this kind of spin excitation. But anyway, so, uh, you know, this uh, seminar work of uh, uh we have, you know, exactly solvable quantum spin liquid. You know, finally, uh, we see what it is. And the uh, grand state uh, is kind of consists, 
consisting of uh, two kinds of uh, Magellana fermions. You know, one is uh, Dirac, which is kind of a gapless, and the other is kind of a localized, you know, defined in you know, each, you know, uh, honeycomb to honeycomb, uh, so-called G2 flux. That is kind of gapful. But once you know that, uh, I cannot, but the theorist can calculate, uh, you know, what kind of response you can expect, you know, from uh, uh, if, you know, quantum spin liquid. And this is, you know, one of the, you know, earliest, you know, calculation, you know, uh, you know by, you know, Johannes Kno and uh, my friend, uh, you know, Rerechi, you know, Moshina. And uh, this is a dynamic structure of so it's kind of a neutron scattering spectrum, okay? And you see, you know, uh, kind of continuum excitation, okay? Uh, and uh, on top of that, uh, you see, do you see kind of blue here? Okay, this is kind of zero excitation, okay? So uh, meaning uh, there is a kind of a gap uh, in the excitation. And I understand that this uh, small excitation gap you know, comes from uh, local G2 flux, because, uh, you know, uh, spin operator, in order to excite the real spin, you know, you have to, you know, uh, deal with uh, two kinds of uh, Majorana. And, uh, you know, one is a kind of lo uh, localized uh, Majorana, and, uh, you know, uh, flipping, you know, plus minus one, uh, that's quite local in character, and uh, have an excitation gap. So, uh, somehow, uh, you know, at least uh, this uh, Dirac dispersion of matter, you know, Majorana fermion is kind of gapless, like a Dirac, you know, fermion. But nevertheless, uh, in a neutron uh, exciting spectrum, you are supposed to see gap. And uh, as far as I said, discuss, this, you know, uh, somehow gapless, you know, gap, you know, those kind of uh, reflects uh, fractalization into two kind of Majorana. Or you can calculate, uh, you know, thermodynamic, you know, quantity of, uh, of you know, quantum spin liquid. And uh, I don't know how tough it is, but according to uh, my friend uh, uh, Motome, you know, he developed a uh, special kind of methodology to calculate the uh, thermodynamics of uh, those uh, KTF, uh, you know, state. And according to him, uh, yeah, so uh, the dynamic signature you can crash by uh, three dg. At high temperature, everything disordered, thermal disordered. Okay, this is kind of red region. And then, you know, around the, you know, this zero sets a uh, type interaction. Okay, uh, ferromagnetic uh, type interaction. Okay, so with, uh, you know, temperature of type interaction, you know, the spin start, you know, collating with each other. But still, you know, it, it's kind of a summary disorder, you know, state, okay? So correlation develops, but uh, still kind of a disorder. And eventually, in the blue region, blue region, uh, you have kind of ordering of G2 flux. As I said, uh, G2 flux is kind of local quantity and uh, defined, you know, for each hexagon. And uh, at low temperature, you know, they tend to order. And uh, that, that happens. But this happens, you know, at, you know, very low temperature. As you see, like uh, 10 to the minus second, 10 to the minus, you know, fourth of, you know, uh, KTF interaction. And uh, in general, in an existing compound, uh, KTF interaction is of the order of 100K, 100K, okay? So that means uh, one here is, you know, 100K of it. And the flux ordering takes place, you know, 1% uh, of KTF uh, interaction. That means 1K, okay? And uh, this is, you know, 100 milli K, and this is 10 milli K. Okay, so this uh, flux ordering and the real, you know, uh, Dirac dispersion should show up, you know, at, you know, very low temperature, uh, reflecting a disorder of uh, this uh, G2 flux, okay? And uh, they calculated the specific heat. And uh, in a kind of a disordered, uh, you know, correlated uh, spin phase, uh, it's like, uh, you know, classical spin liquid. You know, you see uh, almost uh, T linear behavior. But at, you know, low temperature, you see well-defined anomaly. Okay? And uh, this is kind of uh, related to ordering of flux, G2 flux, you know, plus minus one. 
E2 のヘキサゴン。Okay? And if you calculate entropy, okay, you divide the specific heat by temperature and integrate you know, this area over,、uh, you can calculate entropy. And、uh, they calculate、uh, entropy associated with this you know, low temperature peak okay,、uh, from、uh, purple to blue is you know, exactly 50% of R log 2. Okay, 50% of R log 2. Okay? Or maybe passing, you know. Uh, 50% of KB log 2, right? So each spin has a you know, choice of up and down. So they have you know, KB log 2 entropy. And uh, this, uh, you, know,、uh, you know, ordering of flux carries 50%. That means uh, this uh, local and Majorana carries、uh, 50% of spin entropy. Okay? And、uh, they say you know, it's、uh, some sort of、uh, deflection. Of、uh, again fractionalization of you know, spin one half you know, moment.、Okay? So you have kind of matter fermions, you have you know, iterant you know, fermions, and、uh, this is related to、uh, ordering of、uh, localized you know, Majorana fermions, you know, carries、uh, 50% of、uh, entropy.、Okay? And、uh, they say it's kind of a signature of、uh, fractionalization.、Okay? Somehow, Uh, for pure t f u n o magnet, you know,、uh, we know what it is, and we don't have you know, confusion of a gap.、Okay? And we know、uh, how those you know, physical properties behave.、Okay? That's kind of a, a nice part of k i t a i physics. Uh, actually, yeah. So, the sign of a Kitaev interaction could be either positive or negative. So, even you know,、uh, anti fellow case,、uh, you, you, you can draw exactly the same. So, no, no difference. Yeah. So, in the sense that this、uh, you know, I, I, I think pair formation is kind of an essence. Okay, so, uh, so uh, somehow、uh, this is kind of a summary of a kind of concept part. Okay, and uh, so uh, this uh, quantum spin liquid is、uh, you know, like a conventional magnet. Okay, you have you know, fellow, anti fellow ordering, and、uh, this is a typical example of a block symmetry, spontaneous block symmetry. And the spin entropy kind of quenched at the transition. But quantum spin liquid,、uh, no magnetic ordering, no symmetry breaking, and that remains you know, quantum mechanically disordered. And we have kind of more than one kind of quantum spin liquid. But anyway, so spin entropy quenched you know,、uh, kind of gradually. So,、uh, so In some sense,、uh, you know, what I said is、uh, no magnetic ordering, no symmetry breaking. So we, we are searching for nothingness.、Okay? But、uh, somehow this is、uh, similar to the concept of Zen.、Uh, do you know what is Zen?、Uh, yeah, maybe, I, maybe Asian friend you know, might know what is Zen. And、uh, actually, you know,、uh, if you visit a、uh, Japanese temple in Kyoto, Uh, some of them are Zen temple, and、uh, you see a、uh, garden like this, a you know, stone garden like this. And、uh, this represents the you know, concept of uh, Zen, uh, meaning uh, there's nothing, right? And uh, this uh, Zen、uh, tells us、uh, go to the state of nothingness. Okay, go to the state of nothingness. That's kind of important. Okay?、Uh, don't think, okay? They say, don't think, go state of nothing. Uh, then uh, you see hidden reality. Okay? And、uh, somehow we are looking for state of nothing in quantum spin liquid. But once、uh, we reach a state of nothing,、uh, we will see hidden reality.、Okay? This is nothing but the central、uh, dogma of、uh, Zen you know, concept. And、uh, we, we should see reality. Uh, exotic elementary excitations, you know, like、uh, fluxualization.、Uh, that's why I like uh, this uh, quantum spin liquid as uh, 
Japanese. Okay. So. so yeah, when I was a high school student, uh, I refused to take an uh, exam. And uh, my high school was uh, related to Buddhism, so I was sent to Zen temple for two days. And uh, you have to sit still and uh, don't think in anything. Go to the state of nothing. Uh, that's you know, how you learn Zen concept, okay? And if you move, you know, uh, priest is going to hit you, bam, like this, you know. It, it's a kind of tough, you know, punishment, okay? <laughs> but now, uh, okay, so as, uh, you know, yes? Yes. No, no, it, it, it's not real sometimes like phase transition. Yeah. No, no, not, not in a phase transition, not phase transition. Yeah. I say flux ordering, but uh, yeah. No, 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 no. So in, in case of 2D type, uh, there is a no, no phase transition. Okay. Uh, it, it's like Zen, you know, nothing. But of course, uh, you, you have a kind of characteristic uh, temperature. And this corresponds to kind of ordering of flux, okay? So there's a kind of excitation of, uh, you know, excitation uh, in uh, low kind of myelin channel. And uh, below that, you know, gap temperature, you know, you start seeing uh, some sort of Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm, very good question. Yeah, but my understanding is it's like, uh, you know, metal. At high time, there is a kind of a fermion excitation. And uh, at, you know, t equals zero, it's completely film degenerate. And I thought uh, the situation like that. And of course, there is a kind of characteristic temperature for the kind of film degeneracy. However, we, we never call it, uh, you know, ordering. And perhaps, you know, we don't, we don't have you know, any, you know, kind of order parameter here. Right, yeah. But, okay. Uh, yeah, as far as I understand, uh, actually, uh, I'm sorry, actually, Yonbaki kind of gone. Uh, I, I lost, uh, you know, most important uh, consultant uh, here. But uh, there is a three-dimensional architecture system, which I'm going to talk. And in this case, uh, they calculate the same, and they observe, you know, thermodynamic, you know, phase transition. And, but that, that means, uh, you know, in case of uh, three-dimensional KTF, you know, quantum spin liquid you know, has kind of uh, way defined uh, phase and the first order parameter. But, but that, that, that physics, uh, you know, uh, I don't need uh, you know, my consultant. Uh. Any question? Yes. Huh? Uh, could, could you speak loudly, please? Yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So all the spin liquid, you know, should have a uh, kind of long range kind of entanglement. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Now, uh, yeah, now I finished, uh, you know, uneasy part, you know, for me. Okay, now I'm, I, I feel a bit more easier <laughs> to speak about this. Uh, let, let me speak about, uh, you know, uh, how to bring uh, those kind of concepts into reality, okay? 
And in the afternoon, I'm going to talk about the uh, existing compound. Okay, but let, let me do only kind of setup for theorist. Okay. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so uh, this is uh, you know uh, kind of review article by Patrick Lee uh, ten years ago, and uh, he said the uh, end of uh, drought of uh, quantum spin liquid. That means uh, we have you know quantum spin liquid as kind of reality. Actually, you know around. Uh, Ten years ago, we start you know discovering uh, realistic uh, spin liquid you know, candidate, and uh, from now on, you know I'm going to talk about how to materialize those you know concept in real compound. Actually, that, that's my job. Okay. Okay, and uh, you know, I'm going to talk about organics, you know, inorganics, you know, oxide, you know, in this afternoon. But before uh, getting into uh, realistic uh, part, uh, let me try to make you feel a bit easier to handle those uh, different kind of ladders. Okay, so like a typical, you know, playground of uh, those, uh, you know, flustered ladders. Is like a triangularis, cagomeralis, you know, pyrochloralis. And uh, maybe if you are kind of a theory student, uh, you may feel, you know, uh, we, we may need a very special chemistry uh, to realize, you know, this kind of uh, lattice. Okay? But I want to say, okay, uh, take it easy. Actually, you know, uh, triangular lattice, you know, here and there. In the real world, that, that's what I mean. Okay, so let, let me spend uh, you know uh, three, four minutes you know for that uh, before the break. So uh, first of all, everybody, even uh, theory colleague, you know, must know uh, sodium chloride structure. Right? Everyone knows, right? Yeah. And uh, normally, you know, you understand the, you know, this uh, sodium chloride structure as kind of cubic crystal structure, right? And uh, you often consider this, you know, uh, one zero 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 one zero 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 one direction, right? You know, that that kind of normal way. But why don't you take a look at, you know, along, you know, one 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 direction, you know, highly symmetric direction? And if you take a look at uh, sodium chloride uh, structure from, you know, one one one, okay. You know, uh, the first layer, blue layer, actually, you have, you know, uh, okay, let, let me consider nickel oxide, okay, as, you know, sodium chloride uh, structured material. And uh, this is uh, a blue kind of oxygen. And the first layer, if you do a kind of atomic clip, uh, you find the triangular lattice of oxygen. Okay, yeah, you, you can check it by yourself. And the next layer, okay, is you know uh, triangular lattice of nickel, okay? So like if you know nickel has a magnetic moment, uh, you have you know triangular lattice in a magnet you know here, okay? As uh, nickel layer, and the next layer is again kind of oxygen, and uh, so uh, along one one direction. So if you kind of rotate your axis one one direction, uh, you have stack of uh, nickel triangular lattice. Oxygen triangular, nickel triangular, oxygen triangular. Okay, and there are you know thousands of compound you know uh, which takes you know sodium chloride structure, and uh, everywhere you find the triangular lattice. But of course, uh, this you know coupling along you know one 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 direction is very strong. So uh, of course you know as you know you imagine from a cubic crystal structure, you know uh, this nickel oxide is a three-dimensional magnet. Okay, but of course you know uh, we are not that stupid. Uh, maybe, you know, you replace, you know, half of nickel with a uh, lithium. You can do that, right? So there are magnetic nickel layer here and there, and uh, you replace, you know, one out of two nickel layer with a non-magnetic lithium layer, okay? So nickel O become uh, lithium, you know, 0.5, nickel 0.5, Oxygen. Uh, then, you know, uh, nickel triangular lattice is kind of well separated. 
Then you can create a two-dimensional nickel triangularis and the chemical formula lithium nickel O2. Okay, this is very famous uh, triangular magnet. Okay, so it, it's just a superstructure along one, one, one direction. And uh, you take your uh, nickel triangular lattice in out. Okay, that's how you make it. And of course, uh, nickel triangular lattice, okay, uh, if you replace, okay, one out of three nickel with a uh, non-magnetic uh, resium, uh, you can create a honeycomb lattice. Okay, like this. Okay, so you replace the half of nickel with non-magnetic lithium. Now, I replace, you know, uh, one third of uh, nickel with uh, non-magnetic non lithium. That's how I can create the uh, honeycomb lattice. And uh, this is nothing but the uh, compound, okay? All related to sodium chloride, okay? So always, you know, they start from uh, sodium chloride, you know, triangular plane, and uh, we can manipulate uh, using chemistry. Or well, again, this is a sodium chloride structure. And uh, in a sodium chloride structure, you know, if you connect you know, only sodium atom, okay, you find the tetrahedron, right? So in the sodium chloride lattice, you connect in only sodium ion. Then uh, you create a tetrahedron like this. And uh, if you take you know, only this tetrahedron out, from sodium chloride structure, uh, you create you know, lattice like this, okay? Only corner shared uh, tetrahedron, you take out, uh, you, you see this lattice, okay? Uh, this lattice is you know, called the pyrochloral lattice, okay? Uh, structure of a pyrochloral uh, spinel oxide. So if you forget about the pyrochloral structure, start from sodium chloride structure, okay? Now, uh, if you take a look at the uh, pyrochloral structure, Along again one 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 directions, okay. Now uh, you see uh, okay stack of uh, triangular lattice and uh, Kagome lattice. So this uh, pyrochloral structure along one 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 is in you know, a stack of uh, big you know, triangular lattice and uh, Kagome lattice, okay. So like if we, I use the same technique, like uh, replace you know part of it with non magnetic ion. I can create a triangular lattice, or I can create a Kagome lattice, starting from uh, this uh, pyrochloral lattice. And uh, this actually, you know, how I make Kagome compound, okay, which, you know, I'm going to talk in this afternoon. But, you know, somehow, uh, sodium chloride structure is quite, you know, common, you know, structural category. But out of that, uh, I can create all the family of uh, triangular lattice, okay? So uh, my method is just, uh, you know, uh, theory colleagues uh, take it easy, okay? You know, whatever, you know, structure you create, uh, we can make it, okay? <laughs> so I, I think, uh, you know, uh, in the kind of fast part, uh, let me stop, you know, here. Take question, yeah.